and only time that I'm going to take the lead after we do our votes tonight and passing it off to whoever's going to be the chair of the committee. Um, so let's do a quick, everyone just do a quick introduction. We have literally 45 minutes, so we'll be really efficient with our time. And also I have hungry children downstairs who I don't want to attack the snack closet. Um, so let's just go around, start with Anne, and then Anne, you'll just pass it off to whoever you see next in your screen lineup. Uh, let's do name, what you do for a living, and... Zodiac sign. No. And <laughs> All right, Zodiac sign. All right. It's an arts committee. All right. <laughs> um, I'm Ann Kenny. I am one of the artists at Art Up Front Street. If you guys know about that open studio gallery there in town, been there for years, been in Exeter for years. Um, I have been an artist for 30 plus years. I'm not going to tell my age, but uh, professional artists showing internationally. You know, I kind of have work that's called industrial quilts. Um, so that's what I'm known for. I also have a kind of sideline accounting job because I never know when I'm going to make income. Um, and um, I love the arts, the music, et, you know, poetry, everything happening in Exeter. Um, so, you know, definitely decided to go ahead and join this to encourage a kind of group renaissance thing going on. Um, and did I cover that? Uh, you know, and I had a couple kids here that I brought to all the arts and I thought that was such a, a gift of our small town. So. Awesome. And I'll have you pass it on to the next person in your lineup. Okay. David, you're next to me. Do you want okay. to go next? Yeah, sure. Okay. David Druin here, uh, the original person Nico asked to be uh, on the art committee publicly and then kind of like not in the committee really, uh, but also in the committee really. So uh, yeah, David Druin, artist, 25 years. Uh, I'm on a major label. I just do art. I've only ever made music with my friends and toured internationally since I was 16. And uh, yeah, uh, I think art is like the most important part of any place. I think it's what gives all places importance. Like let's say Venice without its canals would be like another strange city or like Florence without the Domo or like, like Paris without the Tower Eiffel would be just like another kind of like, you know, Mark in the Black Plague history of, you know, during the, you know, post Black Plague Renaissance or rebirth, if you will. I liked that word and rent the Renaissance. I hope Exeter experiences the Renaissance of the arts here. I think that's what we're going for. So uh, that's it. Uh, I'm an artist. I do art every day. I teach art to children in Juilliard and Berkeley Music of College every single day. And when I'm not doing that, I'm creating art and I'm just all about the art because I think it's what makes places, people, and things important. And for the last thing, I also think it's the best thing humans ever invented, like more than like combustion gas engine or like nuclear stuff or like any of the other stuff we invented. I think art is probably the best existential example of like who we are and the maximization of our potential. So, and uh, next on my screen is Scott Ruffner. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. Uh, Scott Ruffner, um, grew up here in Exeter, lived away for about 15, 20 years, been back for about 15, 20 years, um, heavily involved in the arts. I know pretty much all you guys. So um, I run and started team in town and spent some few years on the uh, town arts committee. And um, I am genuinely excited about uh, being part of this crew, I think this has been a long time coming, and I think the timing um, is right for us to do some uh, some cool things in town and collaborate with um, other organizations and other municipalities, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, so thanks. 
Uh, next is Don. Hi, my name is Don Amy. Um, I self taught artist. I don't really have any um, amount of years that I've done it. I've just kind of always been in creative. Um, I sling hammers by day at our days. And uh, art's my passion now. I love creating art. I love collaborating. Uh, my biggest draw to want to be a part of this group was to try to bring more interaction between local businesses and artists. Um, I did do a venture with another artist in October where we, um, a new business that had opened up and we started, uh, we did a pop-up art show at this new business and sort of cross-marketed it to kind of help us both out during a really trying time. Um, so I'd like to be a bigger part of that. And I'm a parent of a 13-year-old boy who thinks he's 45, so that's fun. And um, I'm an Aries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one who did that. You're the only one. I was going to say, I'm the only one who did this. Yeah, we're, we're all married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, let's see. Uh, Mary Page. Hello. I'm Mary Page Provost. I um, am the senior producer for New Hampshire Chronicle. I live in Exeter. I grew up in Exeter. Like Scott, I moved away and then came back. Um, I just, my job is to tell stories all over the state of artists and people and places and things to do. And I think obviously I'm partial, but Exeter has some of the best. And so being able to be part of this committee and get everyone on the same page and kind of hear more voices and see, you know, people come out of the woodwork, see where all this talent's hidden. That's why I'm here so and I'm an Aquarius I'm also a producer so I'm very concise and I will pass it on to Todd <laughs> real quick real quick Mary yeah. you did like the sweetest like uh, little segment for my daughter in the painted rocks thing we were doing in like 2019 <laughs> and she was like the front page girl Eleanor right of course Eleanor yes I love Eleanor she's also come I have a little petal flower petal stand and she and your wife have come and got flowers here too <laughs> oh my god I just wanted to thank you I because I, I, I wasn't there I wasn't able to meet you so oh Sorry. yes well it's nice to meet you virtually but I love your daughter and your wife <laughs> thank you so much appreciate it Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Heron. I teach at the Phillips Exeter Academy. I'm in the English department. I've been here for about 18 years. I moved up here from Boston where I was doing graduate school, and before that I was in the South. I'm, I was born in Texas and raised in the Smoky Mountains of North Carolina. Um, so I'm, I'm an Aquarius, but I'm also a Southerner. That's something Dave and I have in common. Um, but I love Exeter, and I love um I love that um, idea of, of Renaissance and that you, you took us to. Um, and I'm not even sure if, if we if, if, if we ever died off and needed a rebirth. I just think that we need some re resurgence, right? And a continual resurgence of, of what of the energy, the, all the great energy that we've got going in the visual arts and the performative arts. And um, it, it's, it's really a, a pleasure to be on this committee and to work with all of you talented and accomplished people. So um, I'm well. That's my day job. I work at the academy. I um, teach literature and creative writing, and I'm a writer myself, um, a poet, and um, I guess I can say now I'm a fiction writer because my first work of fiction, a novella, is coming out this spring. And I'm also a songwriter. I'm involved in the um, in the music scene here in the Seacoast area, um, and I think that's about it. Next on my screen would be Marissa. Hi, everybody. I'm Marissa. I am an art educator. I have been teaching for almost 20 years. I've been working with nonprofits, um, art related, for about 13 years um, in different arts committees. I've only lived in Exeter for, I think we're almost at nine years now. I'm a native Texan, so I'm from Houston. Um, so. 
the art scene there uh, very, very big. When I moved up here, um, I realized there was things sort of bubbling under the surface. So I joined the arts committee. I was on that for four years. Um, but it uh, met Scott and like he got on the committee and there was all this energy that uh, we needed that wasn't there before. And so um, I'm glad this is happening because uh, it's here. It just needs to be pushed to the forefront. So yay, yay us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Dave's already gone, Scott's already gone. So I'm gonna leave it to Bruce. <laughs> Do I click on this? All right. I'm new to this. <laughs> You're up. You're great, Bruce. We can hear you just fine. You can hear me? Yep. Yeah, all right. we're all set. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, Bruce Jones, I've lived in Exeter for 30 years. Um, I used to own an ornamental plaster business in Boston where we stored theaters and churches and, you know, we did all the theaters in Boston and Wang Theater and Symphony Hall and all that business. But I retired from that and now, uh, I always painted. I went to art school, so I'm painting more now and uh, that's my focus. And uh, I worked some with team and was excited with all that kind of energy that came out of it. And um, I look forward to this group and see if we can spread the word that there's arts in Exeter and get some people to come and enjoy it. So that's what I'm hoping for. Last but not least, I think we have Tony. Yeah, I can't seem to rename myself. It always comes up Anthony, which is the only time it was, that name was ever used was when I was in trouble. So it's, it's Tony, please. Uh, I've lived in Exeter for 34 years. I moved up here from New Jersey with my wife, who's a musician, a working musician, an Irish harper. Uh, and my exposure to the arts, I have... I'm not an artist. I was trained as an engineer. Uh, I built a couple of careers as an engineer and developer of renewable energy projects. Uh, retired from that, uh, although in the interim, I was I served as the chair of the Exeter Theater Company in our efforts to purchase and then hopefully restore and reopen the IOCA, which ultimately didn't turn out as well as we had liked, but, but exposed me to at least one segment or maybe several segments of the arts community at Exeter. It gave me a new appreciation for not only how vibrant the arts community is, but what the potential is here and the fact that we have some tremendous venues and a tremendous appetite for the arts in Exeter. Uh, I, I see the arts in Exeter as something that can provide stimulus for our economy. Uh, I, I, I guess I should add that I, I've got a second career now. I own a wine bar and restaurant in town called Vino e Vivo. So I'm certainly uh, always looking for things that can help our not only arts community, but dining community really prosper. Because I think culinary arts there's a reason there's arts after the word culinary is i think that's also an artistic expression as well uh, and i think the integration of all that will really help build an economic engine in in exeter and bring people to exeter and make it a more desirable community to live to visit and i think it will be as, as the old expression goes a rising tide that will will lift all the boats of exeter and really uh make it a place to be a true destination and, and I'm, a, I'm a Scorpio, so I'm stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, great memory. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say one more thing because I hear there's Southerners here. I, I'm a Midwesterner for, from Indiana, but then uh, my husband and I lived in Louisiana for six years and then moved to New Hampshire. And I can tell you that Louisiana totally rocked in music, art, food, festivals. Like I did the go into festivals, traveling around itinerant artists. And it was the most cultural place I've lived in really. So hopefully I can help, you know, bring that to the atmosphere here. But um, uh, I think that's what we have going here, which I was so happy down there. 
with that. There were other problems living down there, but but that was part of the cool part of Louisiana. New Orleans, Baton Rouge, that's where I we lived. But yeah. But amazing point, Anne. And uh if I if I could just say one thing really quick to, on Tony's behalf, which I, I got I got the good name, Tony. I know I know <laughs> uh, Tony's absolutely right about uh in regards to arts bringing economic viability to communities. And part of what I was saying about like what makes Paris, Paris, what makes Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge, what makes, what makes these places. And so let's put it in a, in a quick term that we can all understand. Scott might know the exact number, but how much money did they say the, the Prescott Park concert series provided the local businesses in downtown Portsmouth in 2018 and 2019, I believe it was in excess of $20 million for the local communities uh, in Portsmouth. Wow. So, I mean, the metric 15 minutes away are certainly undeniable when you embrace the arts. So I just want to make that point like a little more clear that like Tony's exactly right and also like echoed that point beautifully and uh the actual the numbers don't lie so i mean they they do not um sorry okay not a business i want to i want to make sure that we don't run out of time because they they have multiple meetings going on tonight but i wanted to get us on the agenda sooner rather than later so if possible i think what i would like us to do is do nominations for chair, vice chair. Um, we can title it, I guess, secretary or clerk, the person who takes the minutes, glorified position, but very necessary position so that we can keep everyone abreast of what we're doing. Um, and then if we can do that, I would also love, I know that Tony, you have to go shortly. So I want to make sure that we do that within the time frame that you're here. And if we can also discuss sort of a general, you know, like if everyone would throw out maybe one big topic that they would like us to put on our bigger picture. And then when we have the chair and vice chair, we can start to figure out the agendas for the weeks to come and then also scheduling. Tuesday nights, just by a show of hands, is that what works best for most people? So that's yes, yes, yes. Bruce, how does that work for you? Yes. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the same yes. <laughs> I'm the <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> if, if this is what works for the majority, then this is what will make it work. There might be the occasional time where I might be late coming to a meeting or have to leave early but if if this works for everyone great so i'll open up the floor if we have any nominations we can do for chair i have a nomination go ahead i would like to nominate tony calandrello as the chair second that okay now so we have a motion and a second any other conversations about it no all right then i will go ahead and do the vote and kenny yay <laughs> do i say yes <laughs> yes i <laughs> wow go tony <laughs> done yes okay mary page hi okay yes. scott ruffner yes sir Todd. <laughs> Aye. Thank you. Uh, Bruce. Aye. Okay, thank you. Marissa. Aye. Tony. Aye. Okay, great. It's unanimous. Congratulations, Tony. You are the chair of the committee. Do I have any thank you, love You're welcome for vice chair. I would like to nominate Scott Ruffner for vice chair. Okay, we have nomination. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, let's do the vote. Anne? Aye. Okay, John? Aye. Okay, Mary Page? Aye. 
Todd. Aye. And uh, Tony. Aye. Bruce. Aye. Okay, Marissa. Aye. Scott. Aye. Okay, great. Do uh, do do. We need a nomination for what do we want to call it? Secretary, clerk. clerk. Secretary, yeah. Secretary, okay. Sure. We have a nomination for the position of secretary for the arts and culture. Uh, Lovey, I'd like to nominate Marissa Vitola. Okay, we have a nomination. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, great. We have a nomination and a second. Any comments or? Nope. All right, Anne. Aye. Don. Aye. Mary Page. Aye. Todd. Okay, Tony. Aye. Bruce. Aye. Okay, Marissa. Aye. Scott, did I say you? Nope. Aye. Okay, great. See how much fun town politics can be? <laughs> All right. So we have the candidates <laughs> vote for Marissa as our secretary. And I will then pass off the notes of today's meeting um, just so that you can also see them after that. Oh, sorry. Right, Bruce. Um, after that, we will transition. We have our three positions. Was there anything else that anyone wanted to bring up before we move on to other agenda? Because Tony, I know you have to go. No, I just, I, I just want to check to make sure that uh, everybody can provide some input into the existing charter mission. There is one that's out on the town website. Uh, I, I know Scott had some input into that, some, uh, so hopefully some others. But I think every every member of the committee should take a look at that and really come prepared for our next meeting with some thoughts on how we may want to refine that mission. Okay. I, I can tell you real quick, Tony, um, you know, Nico um, was, was sort of the catalyst, you know, for this commission. And I did speak to him and he, he made the mission, you know, very broad and open-ended so that, you know, there was plenty of room for us to kind of carve out, you know, things that we wanted to do specifically or directions we wanted to go in. So certainly, you know, th that was part of the intention. So, yeah, I mm -hmm. totally agree. Okay, great. Thank you, Tony. And, and feel free at any point when you have to hop off, yeah, uh, go ahead and do so. So now I think all we need to do is to have a quick conversation. If folks want to share um, we've already done the meeting schedule. Thoughts on future topics or short-term projects or anything like that so that we can kind of have an idea of what's put on the agenda. Because as you all may be aware, as a committee, any meeting that we have all together needs to be done in public. So if you're all meeting together and that's the seven primary members excluding the um, alternates you have to make sure that we're doing this in a public forum so mm -hmm. now's a great time to throw out any ideas that you might want to have in the next couple of weeks and then we'll schedule our our next meeting i don't mind starting of course you don't i know <laughs> um and, and it's all right. Listen, you guys have to understand like I'm in meetings all the time now, <laughs> and I like to make them at least enjoyable. So please <laughs> forgive me if, you know, my sarcasm will totally be directed at Scott, because... Be, be, <laughs> be yourself, <laughs> Lovey, here. Be yourself here at the Arts and Culture Commission. All right, the Arts and um, Culture So I, I just wanted to bring up a few things that, that are kind of like already in motion, things that, um, you know, people have already been working on. Some of the people on this committee that I think personally, I think could be good sort of uh, starting points. Um, one is um, use of town hall. Uh, Tony is very knowledgeable about the town hall. And, you know, when they were looking into doing upgrades, at uh, the town hall downstairs for sound systems, for projectors, for seating, um, you know, so th there's things like that that are kind of already in motion. Bob Glowacki with XTV, he's already done uh, some estimates and, and brought people in uh, for possibilities of what can be done there. Um, 
I've worked a little bit with Parks and Rec and some of the local theater groups, musical arts and Pine Street players on um, getting everyone together as volunteers to sort of work on upgrading uh, the backstage areas uh, at Town Hall um, that, that needs some need some love. Um, so that's that's certainly an item. Um, I think uh, we were working on when COVID hit, we were working on some sort of cohesive events calendar for all of the groups and all of the venues in town that could sort of be in conjunction um, you know, with XTV and the communications committee so that there's one kind of portal uh, for everything going on in town from an arts and culture uh, standpoint. Um, and then uh, public art is something that I know Tony's been talking about uh, for years as far as um, really designing a public art walk, uh, utilizing things that are already in place, pieces that are at Phillips Exeter, but then also um, certainly getting some uh, talk going of some new public art. Uh, Swayze Parkway, obviously there's a lot of conversation with what Renee's working on, which is a great part. And lastly, um, I've been working with um, Greg and Parks and Rec and Darren, the Economic Development Director on uh, Townhouse Common, which is the little park right across from the police station. Um, finding some some new uses for that, possibly um, some new permanent picnic tables where people can get takeout food and go and, and hang out and possibly putting up a small uh, little deck staging area for smaller concerts or uh, potentially little pop-up um, art shows, uh, maybe a spot for a, a food truck once a week. Uh, so those are just a few of the ideas that kind of already have some legs, but certainly this is um, this is the group to kind of get involved and, and see how we can all work together to uh, push some of those ideas forward. Thanks. No, I think that's great. So actually it would be because of the timing and, you know, with warmer weather coming, I think that might be a beneficial thing to put at the top of the agenda for our next meeting. Um, to figure out what permits are necessary, you know, what preparation has to happen. You were saying about purchasing tables, et cetera, et cetera. So if we can do that, I think that might be a great kickoff to really have something tangible, visual, auditory <laughs> that's ready to go um, for the summer because it would it would be be great. And then it wouldn't interfere with things that are already happening on Swayze for the summer. So awesome. Are there any other ideas or thoughts people have that they want to have on the short term agenda? Or I would just love it if we could have a, a comprehensive conversation of all the events that are planned uh, for the summer on Swayze and, and other places around town so that we can get together and think of how best to um, support them. Like that a lot. Yeah, festivals and whatnot. I have a comment in that same uh, vein and regard. I was just waiting until Lovey was done. Right? Sorry, I'm also trying to take yeah. notes. <laughs> you're bi I'm your biggest fan, Lovey. Always. Oh, uh, you're cute. <laughs> Hey. It's, it's Lovey's world and we're all living in it. And you know what? It's, it's a pretty nice world. It takes people a while to realize that, but they, they, they catch on. Go ahead, Dave. They do. So Scott mentioned one thing, that there was a like a very particular town portal that let everybody know at all times all the events happening throughout Exeter under one umbrella, let's say. Then Todd echoed the same sentiment that there'd be a great way for like a centralized way of everyone knowing everything that's going on in town to do with the arts and be able to like pick and choose what we want to bring our children to what we would do do a date night with with our like significant others or like maybe just like go by yourself like sometimes we all like to do like the movies when like your wife doesn't want to go see the Avengers part three, but you really do like in my situation. So uh, I think those, what Todd and Scott are, is they're kind of like ruminating on here is our lack of like a, a simple and easy to navigate umbrella. Maybe it's a website in, or maybe it's like a, a website slash Facebook slash Instagram that like encompasses and really focuses on the local quality of events 
that we are doing here in, in town. Because no matter what we do, I think we could all agree, we could do a million events in town, but if no one knows anything about them, then right. what good is it going to do? So like getting that centralized hub that, that Todd and Scott so like easily put forward, I, I, I think is a, a really crucial element as like a step two almost after this process of gathering our, you know, the artists and, and people who support the art in town is a step one. I think step two is getting that umbrella together because we need people to know that like, you know, the same way that other places become important, like Portsmouth and Stone Church and Newmarket and in places around that become like, you know, important artistic places that Exeter is an important artistic place. Like, we also here. think they're sorry, David, I didn't mean to interrupt, but they're also like looking at examples of other towns that have done that well. Right. Like so it's not like Littleton or Peterborough, like places where it's not about one place in the town, but all the like the whole artist community and seeing how they're doing it. Because as someone who looks for stories, there are some places, some towns that try and do what you guys are saying and you go to that website and you can't navigate it or it promotes one thing over another. So seeing what other places have done like that and, and how they do it. Yeah, almost like that a sounds great. Thing. I mean, if if we could pull together some of those, like I'll start taking a look to see what other towns are doing. If others have time to do so, and we can have that listed as towns that we can, you know, all look at for our next meeting. I think that might be a great way to, because there's no point in reinventing the wheel. So if there's a place right. that's already doing it and they're doing it well, and all you know, people can sort by type of you know, events, like, is it music? Is it, is it theater? Is it, you know, food related? And you can see out for a six month period. I think that would be a great way. And, you know, we can figure out whether that can be through the town website or like you said, David, a Facebook page or something along those lines. You know, I'll piggyback on that. I've like built three websites now. And um, like you say, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. Go. I always look at other things before I build the website I'm building. Um, and simplicity is very important. You know, it's as simple as what is the menu? Food music, art, ex and what, you know, I'm glad this is coming up because one of my ideas, I didn't want to say it at my interview, I wanted to wait for the committee, is that there be an extra arts and culture website, but there's a link on the town of Exeter's website where you just go to that website. So it doesn't get buried in a bunch of clicks. So there could be a very nice website and I know Team Exeter has done one. So I, I'm all for, I think as working parents and other people, when you just know there's a website where you can just go look up, you know, calendar, music, arts, food, whatever, um, that that's the way to go because trying to go between Facebook and Instagram and tech, you know, it gets, if there was just one main venue, um, I'm all for that and I'd be happy to help with some of that, but, you know, and I can show you websites I've either built or looked at for that. Um, and then I'll just add, since I'm on right now, the, the other idea I had, cause I'm not sure that's really happening is I would like to encourage our Exeter high school students, um, being a part of the arts and culture community and at town hall that the music bands, the artists, um, you know, maybe even some theater or impromptu comedy. I'm not sure I've seen a lot of the high school students having that venue. And I've seen beautiful and wonderful stuff at the high school. So, you know, that's another thing I thought would be nice uh, to think about for town hall. And I think it's real community. And I think teenagers are so artistically potent in high school that that, you know, and maybe Phillips Exeter becomes part of that. Um, so that's just something else I thought about during all this. But no, that would, I would think that, you know, that's come up in conversation. It would be a great town gown relation with PEA and also to provide, you know, the young students of our town to have a space for performing to larger audiences. 
it's a good, so, a good segue to, to get that going. Yeah, that was my thought because I've done the Youth Art Month at the town hall in the last three years. Well, not this year. Um, so we do we do have high school students that perform. We have dance. We have they sing. They play their instruments. Um, we show their artwork. It's usually SAU 16 and SAU 17. Um, other local like art schools. We've tried to get Phillips Exeter involved before. Um, I just don't think it, the time is right because that's when their March break is usually. Um, but yeah, and then also the public artwork. In the past, um, I've tried to bring forward a community mural. Uh, to be done for the American Legion and the select board, it was voted down. So I think now we're much more open to that. And I would love to do a community mural somewhere in the town where we get uh, any, anybody to come paint something. For Let's do a post-pandemic mural. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Breaking free from the mask. Yes, a big, a big community art project. Right. I'll three feet apart, though. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all right. I think we have a. Re these are really these are really great ideas, and I think this is a a good starting point. Um, I also don't want to overwhelm our starting point, so I think we have some three or four topics that I think would be great to start off with. Um, what I'll do is I'll compile the notes and I'll probably reach out to some of you to solidify some of the things that I probably miswrote. Um, once we do that, so I think to begin, it might make sense to try and meet twice a week for a couple of months to get the ball rolling. And twice one a month, you mean? Twice a month, excuse me, God. <laughs> You're about to get some resignations. I that much to me twice a week. No. Yeah, I was going to say, love me, there aren't enough Tuesdays for that. No, no, no. All right. We'll meet twice a month to begin. And then I think once we sort of have our grounding of what we want to do and we can work within smaller groups within the committee, we can then transition to, to once a month. But I think with the summer coming, this is a really great time for us to really start getting some things going, um, literally while it's hot, uh, New Hampshire right. hot. Um, anything else that I'm missing that folks want to throw out before we kind of wrap up? I have a motion to end the meeting. So move. 